As somebody who is a fan of the Halo, of Halo along with the series Red vs. Blue, I grew up watching the series since around 2007. I'm pretty sure my first episode was probably an episode of the second season. I'm at least around 25 years old, living in a town in Lakewood, Colorado, and, Colorado, and have been living there since for a long time. Anyway, there was a DVD right by my house. I mean, say around a few blocks away, and, it was, and its color was orange. I basically go there to pick up some movies and TV shows. I normally watch action movies and random sitcoms from the 1980s or 1990s. Anyway, here was a story I once watched a lost episode of Red vs. Blue. I once went to this to this DVD store to buy a Red vs. Blue Season 7 copy until this one manager requested me to watch this DVD I've never not heard of. Some sort of Red vs. Blue DVD that featured only six episodes. Five of the episodes were actually from different seasons, all mixed together. The DVD was at least around one ninety nine, so it was pretty much something cheap, and I bought this odd DVD. The DVD's cover was your typical Red vs. Blue DVD. However, it has a title called The Roadchester Incident. Pretty confusing on why it's even titled The Roadchester Incident. The only thing that makes a little sense is that Rochester is where the creator of Redford's Blue, Bernie Burns, where it was born. Got back home. When I got back home, I put this DVD inside the DVD player. I would put on the TV at that juncture. And when the menu screen came on, it featured some epi episodes for mixed sagas. There was even a pilot episode of the whole show. This lost episode was only titled Puddle. The question is, why is the episode even titled Puddle? The episode looks like it comes from a recollection saga. Anyway, our episode starts with the first scene with the church and Caboose fighting over some shotgun. No! You can't take my shotgun! It's mine! It's mine! Caboose said to church. Oh, for God's sake, Caboose! It was literally my shotgun! Tucker would then, would then stop this fight. And here's something weird. This feels like a Blood Gulch episode rather than a recollection one. Anyway, Sergeant Donut came into the scene. Donut tells Church and Caboose that they should have seen the fireworks that were blasting last night. Donut, this isn't even the 4th of July, said Church. Donut walks away from Church and goes to his base. The next scene comes to Simmons playing cards with Griff. Griff drinks a bottle of beer, and when you're wondering... Did Rooster Teeth even use mods for this episode? Simmons was actually s setting up the party for the red base. All of a sudden, we get this random character named Cliff, who's Griff's brother. Cliff and Griff meet each other and set up their party. The party scene began with Sergeant Simmons crouched spamming and the boys would begin to eat and drink as usual. The music was played and it was some sort of heavy metal music. Cliff introduced him self during the party who was a man who was two young years younger than Griff and would even hang out with Griff at times. I didn't really know even know if Griff hangs out with someone who isn't even in the show. The party continues and Church and Tucker look at the red base. So Church, what do you think is going on? Tucker said. Tucker's Church responds, they're having a party. They both walk back to their bases until I get to notice in the background everyone at the beginning of the party and get to see this gray hand with silver claws. I wanted to keep watching if this is something special. I skipped to the morning scene. Church and Caboose had to clean up the mess of the Reds caused the nice night before. Tucker takes the beers out and Griff was sleeping from all the alcohol and the Reds were drinking. Caboose literally eats a drop slice of pizza that has half eaten. Tucker was sweeping the broken glass, and Church was picking up the food, the food boxes, and all that shit load of stuff that was dropped to the floor. I, then I see this claw again at, right at the door. I continue watching to my as it got to my amusement to this hidden Easter egg. The next scene cuts to some field outside. Seems as Cliff and Griff were fishing with each other. Seems like Cliff caught a couple of bluegills while Griff. And he caught a carp. He got back to the land and drive back to their warthogs, the base. Then they talked like brothers. Cliff said, yeah, seems like you only caught one fish. I get more points and I'm the more of an important brother than you. Griff fights back until they crash into some of the fields. 
they would be abandoned in the fields and therefore they need to be the rest of they need the rest of the reds to help them cuts to the blue base church caboose and tucker talking about a secret portal that will teleport them to a land to take out an army that has been hacking their systems for a long time they wanted to hunt him down for trying to mess with their systems and maybe even mess with his systems their systems what's really weird is that they literally steal items from the red base to pretty much make this portal. Tucker, this is really a bad idea, said Church as Tucker responds. Sharing is caring, Church, and you get, should get over it. The Church said this isn't really sharing. This is stealing. Let's get back to the base. As they go back, Caboose uses a telescope to look at the nightlight. Caboose yells out, Hey, Church, I found some stars. The next scene so shows Sarge, Simmons, and Donuts curious on whether the hell crib. Cliff and Griff went. Sarge first said, Is Cliff and Griff is Griff and Cliff hunting some elites and grunts? Donuts said back, I don't even know, Sarge. They must be fishing in some of the ponds. Simmons and Donut look at each other. Sarge would respond, I don't know. Let's see if they are at the sea. Please no, I'm still pumped for this reveal of the hand that came throughout the entrances and shit. I'm waiting for this. It's some sort of reveal of a new character or beast that was originally going to be in the show. The scene cuts to Church inside, a, stuck inside a pile of boxes. His head, his head pops out and wonders where the hell he even is. Where he even is. He searches for Tucker and Caboose and finds them behind him. Tucker and Caboose said to Church, So, uh, I've heard uh, the Reds are going to find Cliff and Griff. Tucker responds, God damn it, where the fuck are they? It's been 13 hours, and it usually takes three to have them come back. I hear some sort of whistle that, while Caboose crouches to Tucker. Yeah, there was a whistle that was getting louder and louder until it stopped. I still kept my eyes inches away from the TV screen to see what's gonna, going to come to some interest, like, or something like that. The next scene cuts to Cliff and Griff talking on how they're going to get out. They were pretty thirsty, and therefore they needed something to drink. Uh, Griff, there's literally a lake by us. They come to drink the lake water. When they get back to the land, I get to hear s some footsteps running on grass. So, how do we get out of here, Cliff? Cliff responds with, I do not know, Griff. There's no way we could get out, and we forgot our devices to call out in someone. Footsteps get more intense and harder. Griff picks up some sticks from the bushes and said, Okay, Glyph, here we get the sticks to build some hut. The footsteps get heavier and much more intense. Griff responds with, So we going to have to survive So we going to have to survive this shithole? Cliff responded, Well, yes, it's the current situation we are talking about, Griff. My eyes peel towards the bushes, towards Cliff and Griff, and I was expecting to see something come out. Griff responded, oh boy, this is going to be like a real-life castaway. He cuts the angle of Cliff, saying, dude, it's going to be fine. Besides, we're probably going to get a miracle. The angle cuts black, just Griff saying, a miracle? A miracle with no device to call on people. How is this a miracle when, when we don't have any fucking support? The cut angle cuts back to court to Cl towards Cliff, saying, hey, Griff, we don't need support for miracles. They, they can... They can when they can happen when some random person finds us. The then the angle cuts towards Griff responding. Well, I guess that's true, but we still need us some support. We still need someone to be called in. We well, all of a sudden, bah! Good fucking god! I responded. So the thing popped out of nowhere as it attacked Cliff. The thing was well ugly, and it was really ugly with its freaky appearance, and he had a tail. He had yellow teeth, rusty metal eyes as claws, and he had some really gray skin. Cliff was screaming while he got while he got mauled to shreds. Screaming for help while he got mauled to shreds by the creature. However, there wasn't any blood, but he was sure screaming for his brother to help him. The creature made this really odd sound where it sounded like, like a pig squeal mixed with something I can't even explain. Scratch mark on Cliff's armor and the limbs were completely and were ripped off completely. 
Griff uses his shotgun, but the problem was it was jammed. The creature used its stinger to, on its sting tail to sting him. I read the creature's stinger was some sort of dark grayish liquid that was actually a mix between lava, acid, boiling grease, chemicals, gunpowder, and rat poison. It was injected towards Griff and he began to melt. Yet again, there wasn't any blood, but he melts. When he melts, he begins to scream, and his screaming was pretty damn intense. The creature watched Griff die an awful death. Griff melted like a candle, and he hunched back. The orange liquid's melting down from Griff's ar armor while he was screaming. His screams were so damn ear-piercing to the point I had to turn down my television. His armor would also burst out bubbles while he still screams in pain and agony. When his limbs melt were melted out, his face would actually be revealed towards the camera while the front of the helmet was melted off. It was charred. Blisters covering his cheek as people would turn up towards his forehead. And spiders would come straight out of his mouth while screaming while his jaw would get dislocated. Then his half of his face melts off, revealing his own skull. Screaming got even worse and it didn't even sound human. It sounded so high that it actually got stuck into my head for a while. And the top of his helmet stretched towards the rest of his face while it actually sizzled. Then I get to see a puddle of orange with only Griff's arm reaching out. The orange armor then melts away. When we, we get to see his arm being a skeleton. This was until the arm too got melted down. It's nothing but a puddle of orange with steam smoking out of it. it cuts to the creature running towards the wood. Cuts back to Sarge, Simmons, and Donut looking for Cliff and Griff to the lake. We find the creature again making this weird fucking sound again. Sarge shoots the creature with a shotgun and kills it. Well, when the team found Cliff, mauled, Cliff's mauled pieces in the puddle of orange, the episode literally ends with Simmons saying, Wait, is that a puddle of ice cream? This appeared to be one of the only comedy factors to this episode. I really wasn't scared on what I saw. Please note this was a fictional. This was fictional, and Red vs. Blue is a fictional web series. Got back to the DVD store and told the manager why I was requested this. The manager really didn't get to watch the DVD before giving even giving it to me. I was more amused by what I watched rather than scaring the socks off me and thinking this was some sort of gore video, unlike many other lost media cases that were found. Anyway, I actually got a letter from Rooster Teeth, too, that I could consider a coincidence for asking about an episode they created once and was forgotten and lost. The letter read, Dear Reader, back in 2008, we made an unfinished and lost filler episode of this web series, Red vs. Blue. We wanted it to be more creepy. There were some copies of this lost episode only found in a few stores, and there was only a couple of people that, that have watched this episode... If you watch this episode, please note that at the end of the episode, Cliff and Griff were brought back to life by some sort of substance the blue team found in the red base, and they were f they were out to find the army that hacked the equipment for the blue base. The episode was lost due to it being pretty filler and wasn't too interesting to our tastes. I hope you enjoyed the majority of the lost episode. Sincerely, Rooster Teeth. Now, I know why the episode was lost. Although the question is, why did they create a random filler episode? Just... Because just to let you know, this wasn't even Halloween-based. To be honest, Cliff would be a really interesting character in the series. 